finally, after 14 long years, one failed Kickstarter campaign, three years of making content on this game, two years of talking about its possible revival, the new HeroScape arrived on my front porch. <laughs> At first, I was gonna do this whole content thing with it, but then I thought, you know what? Let me just be like a normal human being for once in my goddamn life and not a freaking content ghoul. But the content ghoul habit is a hard one to break because as I was reading through the cards, I thought, you know what would be fun? A blind react to the new units. So that's what we're gonna do today. Yes, I know this information has been out for like, Ever, but you know what? I haven't looked at the cards and uh, I just got the new stuff today. So I'm going to do it uh, and I don't care. So first up, we are looking at Leviathan, the Kiri warrior. Now, word of warning, I did actually read this one. Uh, there were a couple of units that whose cards I already looked at prior to me getting the idea to film this video. Leviathan has a Brutality Aura, which is when a squad figure you control within four clear sight spaces of Leviathan attacks an adjacent figure. With a normal attack, before defense dice are rolled, you may re-roll all attack dice that did not show skulls. Brutality Aura may be used only once per turn, not per round, which is... Holy crap, dude. That is, like, so overpowered. Um, I'm a big fan. Uh, I think it's a, it's a very fun ability that'll be fun to play in tournaments, especially when you couple. Now, that won't, this next ability just applies to Leviathan, not like the units that are powered by that. But so far, this guy looking pretty like a very S tier unit. Uh, Leviathan also gets Deadly Strike. So when attacking with Leviathan, all skulls rolled count for one additional hit. One of my favorite armies in Classic Scape, the Omnicron, bleh, Omnicron Snipers, uh, uses a similar move like this, and they're super fun to play with. Um, and then Dynastic Leadership. So if you control Leviathan and another unique Kiri hero that follows Utgar, which is the red guy, so this is Raylan, um, then any figures you control who follow Utgar increase their move value by one. So this has a lot of synergies with all of Heroes Game, not just Age of Annihilation. He also has flying. What's crazy about Leviathan is that he has movement of five, range of one, attack of two. But remember, when you roll a skull, that counts for two skulls. So that might as well be like an attack of possibility of four wounds. Five or six wounds if you have height. And then three defense and he only costs 80 points. So whoever controls Delta, which is like the fan patch, if you will, for balancing, get on Leviathan. This guy is totally OP. Next, we're looking at the Exiles of the Sundered Sea. Now, upon first reading, this is another card that I've already read. I thought they were a little bit more OP, but on second thought, I think not necessarily. So first and foremost, they have Black Powder Pistols. Basically, three times throughout the game, they can increase their range from one to five, and, and they can only use it once per round, not even per turn. So I don't think this is a big deal. They have an attack of three, so there are way better ranged units that you can add to your army. Stealthy 13, if an exile of the Sundered Sea you control is attacked by an opponent's figure that is not adjacent, but at least one skull is rolled. Roll the 20 side die, if you roll one through 12, roll defense die normally, blah, 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 blah. 13 or higher, you take no damage, you move three spaces. This is a very similar move to one of my favorite units, the Ninjas of the Northern Wind, who are grotesquely underappreciated, but I almost won a freaking tournament with them, and it was so sick, and it's one of those things where if I filmed it, it would've been dope, but when I go to Hero Escape tournaments, I like to be in the moment, so I don't really film, sorry. Uh, they also have Disengage, uh, which means they are never attacked when leaving in engagement, and they are 75 points. So these guys are basically the ninjas of the northern wind but i believe their defense isn't as good and i think they're a little bit cheaper in base also they're pirates next up we have the frost claw paladins of uh, the clockwork combine but i think they're scrapping that whole idea frost claw paladins are interesting because they are the first squad unit in HeroScape to have a multiple life per figure so each frost claw paladin has two hit points and there are four of them 
Uh, they have a move called Run 3. Before moving a Frostclaw Paladin, you may add 3 to that figure's move value this turn. If you do, subtract 2 from that figure's attack value this turn. So their base stats are they have a movement of 3, which is not a lot, uh, a range of 1, attack of 3, defense of 4. So these are big, beefy, tanky guys. And you can use that Run 3 special ability to turn that move into a 6, but at the cost of attack power. So it's going to be really useful early on the game putting your guys into position. Next, they have Jandar Champion Bonding. Before taking a turn with the Frostclaw Paladins, you may take a turn with a champion. You control who follows Jandar, who are the blue guys. I think Finn the Viking Warrior and Thorgrim from uh, Rise of the Valkyrie are champions, so that would be Bonding. I would have to find a full list of all Jandar champions, but I think there's a lot of possible uh, bonding with this, and that's super useful. Obviously, it's designed for Knight Irene, but there are more possibilities there. Those are the three cards that I looked at before filming this. So this is all now blend. Admiral EJ1M, who follows Vidar, who is my second favorite of the generals. That could be a whole separate video if there is interest in it. He starts off with Admiral's Orders. After rolling for initiative, you may move any order markers from this card onto any of your pirate or captain army cards, which is okay. Now we're getting into the blind reacts. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. That's kind of interesting because I know some people who are way better at this game than me will actually look at their opponents like order markers to see what's coming up next. And so it is kind of cool to do a fake out like that, but I just don't think this is the most like useful ability. Boarding party special attack range of five attack of two plus special, which means that there are some abilities that they uh, special attacks don't apply. So like I want to say if you used a ranged attack on like the Krav Maga agents from Rise of the Valkyrie, the Krav Maga agents have a special ability that says if you roll one defense on a normal ranged attack that you're fine, no matter how many skulls are rolled. I think because this is special like that wouldn't apply. Someone may correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. Anyways, you may attack up to four times with boarding party special attack. Roll one additional attack die when attacking a figure engaged with the pirate or captain you control. After each attack, if that was the first time you attack the defending figure this turn, you may move one pirate or captain figure you control up to four spaces. You may not move the same figure more than once during a turn. Dude. Oh, my nose is really itchy. It's not cocaine, I promise. But oh my God, that is so cool. That would be super fun. That is kind of like Major Q10 and Major uh, Q9, which makes sense because it's a Vidar Soulborg. But that is really cool, especially with pirate bonding. I mean, obviously it's designed with the pirates in uh, mind, which were the two squad cards at the beginning of the video. But that is really cool. I think that'd be really fun, especially the fact that if it's the first time you attack, you can move an allied pirate four spaces. I think that'd be super useful. Um, very cool card. Big fan. Uh, movement of five, range of one, attack four, defense of six, and 170 points, which I think is warranted. <laughs> that boarding party special attack. That's really... That is really nice. All right, here she is. Raylan the Kiri Warrior. What we've all been waiting for. So she has terrifying aura. When opponent's figures are within four clear sight spaces of Raylan, they lower their defense value by one, which is kind of the inverse of Raylan from um, Rise of the Valkyrie or Swarm of the Morrow, where uh, she buffs her ally's defense. Evil Raylan uh, lowers her enemy's defense, which I like that. And Twist the Blade. If Raylan inflicts at least one wound with the normal attack or leaving engagement attack, she inflicts one additional wound which harkens back. There are a number of units from uh, the original run that have similar abilities like that. She has an attack of three. So if you hit all three, that's six wounds that kills a hero immediately. If your opponent whiffs on their roll, which is very cool. She has movement of six range of one. Uh, as I said, attack of three defense of three and costs a hundred points, which the Delta will probably fix. Uh, and she has flying, of course. Oh, and she rides a freaking tiger. And Arthas is destroying my girlfriend's notebook. Next, we have Rakachot, Steward of Death, which, what a name. Command Familiar. After revealing an order marker on Rakachot, Steward of Death, before taking Rakachot's turn, you may take a turn with a small or medium beast you control, which there are a number in this release. So, obviously, I like that they have bonding out the gate. They didn't do that with Rise of the Valkyrie. They hinted at bonding with um, Grimnak, but uh, they didn't have any bonding figures uh, on release. You had to wait until they started releasing the expansion waves. And 
in this release, they are coming right out the gate with that, which I really like. Consume the Dead. Start the game with three red consume markers. When a figure within three clear sight spaces of Rakicha is destroyed, place a consume marker on this army card. You cannot place more than one consume marker on this card each turn. Soul Fury Special Attack. Range of one, attack of two, plus special, which we already talked about what that means. All figures adjacent to Rakchod are affected by Soul Fury Special Attack. Atta add one to Rakchod's attack dice for each consume marker on this army card. Roll attack dice once for all affected figures. Each figure rolls defense dice separately. Do not place consume markers on this army card while using Soul Fury Special Attack. After using Soul Fury Special Attack, remove one consume marker from this army card for each figure you attacked this turn. So if I read that correctly, and I probably didn't because I'm really dumb, the previous move of Consume the Dead allows you to buff his attack for that special attack, I think, at the cost of they are also attacked, which is uh, super interesting. I kind of like that. It's a little bit more magey. I don't think we've seen anything like that in previous releases of the game. So that would be uh, super interesting uh, for you, for some reason, um, blue players, like people who play blue decks in Magic the Gathering, I think would really like that. His movement of five, range of one, attack of three, defense of four, and costs 100 points. I probably won't play him that often, but if that's more your style, have fun. All right, Miserax, the Kiri warrior. She has life drained. Each time this figure destroys a figure, you may remove a wound marker from this army card. Let's go. Always fun little vampirism for you uh, black deck players of Magic the Gathering. There you go. Life drained spirit. When Miserax, the Kiri warrior is destroyed, place this figure on the army card of a unique warrior hero that follows Revna. That's the new general. That hero now has life drain very, very cool. She's OP. Oh, she is flying too. And the reason I say she's OP is because looking at her stats, movement of six, range of one, attack of three, defense of three, very solid stats, only 50 points. So Delta Committee, get on that. Let's go to Knight Irene. This is the Frostclaw Paladin's champion or whatever. Just like the Frostclaw Paladin, she has run three, so similar thing. She buffs her movement, but at the cost of her attack, subtract two from her attack, not three, and you add three to her move, just like her underlings. She has the Overwhelm special attack, range of one, attack of three plus special. We know what that means at this point. You may attack twice with Overwhelm special attack. If you attack the same figure a second time, you may roll an additional attack die for the second attack. You may not use Overwhelm Special Attack if you use the Run Special Power this turn. I like that a lot. That's going to be great for attacking heroes. This is just Fundamentals Basketball. There's nothing super flashy about her, but she gets the job done. She has five hit points. I haven't been mentioning that for the previous heroes. My bad. Movement of four, range of one, attack of four, defense of four. I like her. I will probably run her in armies because I think she's just a very solid squad player. I'm a big fan. And I like that she isn't, she isn't, built with necessarily her Frostclaw Paladins in mind. They're obviously built, like, built with her in mind, even though you can substitute them for other champions. But I think solid card. I'm a fan of its design. All right, Dorim the Bulkhead Brawler. He has charge. I'm not going it, to... It's late. I'm not going to do the voice acting. Uh, if Dorim the Bulkhead Brawler attacks an opponent's figure during his turn, the move value of all your army cards is increased by one until the next time you reveal an order marker. That is stupid um, and kind of dumb. Because what that means, in, to play Hero Escape, I did a video on how to play Hero Escape, but that, that doesn't mean anything, basically. Okay, cool. If he attacks an opponent's figure during his turn, fantastic. Move value of increased by one. Awesome. Until the next time you reveal an order marker, in order to use another figure or whatever, you have to reveal an order marker. So I guess the only way that would really, uh, the only way you could really use that is if you used him for bonding with other pirates, which really narrows his focus. I think they should have gotten rid of that. I think it should have been increased for the round. I think that would have made him a lot more dynamic and just better, uh, as is you can't use that unless you're running pirates with him and it's pirate bonding. So you use one of the other pirates who have like captain bonding or whatever, and then he gets to go first, and then it increases the movement rate of those pirates. Does that make sense? I know that's super wordy. It would be a lot better, I think, if you get rid of that. But what do you guys think? I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Anyways, let's move on. He has Chain Axe. After rolling attack dice before defense dice are rolled, you may re-roll one die that did not roll a skull. I love that. Not necessarily to play against, but to play with uh, because, you know, more opportunities for success. We're all about lifting the homies up. 
Dorm has a movement of five, range of one, attack of four, and defense of three. That attack of four combined with Chain Axe is crazy because, it's, I mean, more it's all the more likely you'll roll those four skulls that you need. Uh, very, very powerful figure, only at 100 points, will probably be rectified in the Delta. Xenothrax the Vine Weaver, the big bad dragon boy. Summon Vines. Xenothrax starts the game with three Xenothrax Vines glyphs on this army card once per round. After moving in before attacking, Xenothrax may choose an empty space within four spaces of Xenothrax and place a Xenothrax Vine glyph from this army card onto that space. Say that five times fast. I'm sure we're going to see what that does in the next ability. Erupting Earth Special Attack. Range of five plus special. Attack four, special. The first target of Erupting Earth special attack must be within a range of five. After attacking with Erupting Earth special attack, you may choose a figure that was adjacent to the defending figure at the beginning of that attack and attack that chosen figure with Erupting Earth special attack, rolling one fewer attack die. You may continue attacking with Erupting Earth special attack in this manner, rolling one fewer die than the previous attack, up to a total of four attacks. A figure cannot be attacked more than once in a turn with Erupting Earth special attack okay so what's the point of summon vines i'm guessing the vine glyph will tell you what it does it probably is like a snare or something like that i haven't read it yet because i'm fake that erupting earth special attack reminds me once again very much of major q9 and just attacking until you can't anymore and is super fun to play with especially against very squad heavy armies something that i'm seeing in just reading uh these couple of cards from the master set is that it looks like Rowan or whoever the uh, war council are really trying to counter the very squad heavy play that we've been seeing in the competitive scene for the past 14 years as they joke it's not heroescape it's squadscape and I think this will do that so you know if you're fighting a uh, against Romans or whatever. I mean, this could mow through all of them. Their stats are eight hit points, five movement, one range, six attack, which damn, and uh, three defense, which isn't a much, but a lot of hit points and costs 200 points. We'll see what the Delta has to say about that. We are on the last unit from the master set and then i'll be doing the battle box next knaves of the silver scimitar starting off we have the captain's way at the start of the game choose a unique captain you control to be the knaves of the silver scimitar's captain for this game knaves of the silver scimitar roll one additional defense die against attacks from non-adjacent figures when their chosen captain is within four clear Sight spaces. Captain's orders. Before taking a turn with knaves of the Silver Scimitar, you may first take a turn with the chosen captain or pirate hero you control. So this is the only way that you're going to be able to use Dorm's charge and for it to make sense. You bond with Dorm. You make him your captain if you have these guys. Then you reveal the order marker on these guys. You go with Dorm. You know, he attacks whatever. And then that buffs their movement. So they go from movement of five to a movement of six. But we'll cover their stats in a sec. Next, they have first assault one. When attacking with the knave of the Silver Silver Scimitar, the defend if the defending figure was not adjacent to that knave of the Silver Scimitar at the start of this turn, that knave of the Silver Scimitar receives one additional attack die, which is a very fun ability to have. I am a big fan. And finally, disengage. They can leave uh, melee range with other units. They can leave engagement and not have to take uh, an attack roll. Their stats are movement of five, range of one, attack of three, defense of two at 65 points. I think they are very fair. I think they will be very fun to play with, and I look forward to playing with them. They will definitely be in my army. I'm noticing no Einar. My heart, my soul hurts. Renegade, come on, Lee. We have a good professional relationship. Where's Einar? Where's the Einar love? I know this is Age of Annihilation. You didn't have control over this, but when you guys take over designing, once you get through all this, I'm going I'm to need to see my purple boys. All right, let's take a look at the six units from the battle box. First up, we have Bok Bur Na, who has Intimidate. Small and medium figures within three clear sight spaces of Bok Bur Na reduce their defense value by one when attacked by a captain or pirate you control. It sounds like the, uh, the pirate army is where it's at. This first wave was definitely released with Pirates in Mind. There was a lot of synergy with Age of Annihilation. They very clearly liked the whole pirate idea. And this just adds that the pirate army, I think, is going to be very strong out the gate. Swashbuckler. After attacking with Buck Burna, you may attack an adjacent figure one additional time. Buck Burna's attack value is increased by two for the second attack. So super useful against squads. Once again, I think they really did a 
really great job of buffing heroes and allowing them to really mow through uh, squads. Utgar's Cutlass 14. When Buck Bernard destroys an adjacent figure with a normal attack, you may roll the 20-sided die. If you roll 14 or higher, remove one wound marker from Buck Bernard. Buck Bernard cannot use Utgar's Cutlass on destructible objects. So far, I like him. I'm going to use him. Also, he's a Maro, which is, you know, nice throwback to the OG release. Bach Bernard's stats are movement of five, range of five, attack of two, defense of three, five hit points, and he comes in at 125 points. I, I think that's maybe a little heavy, but uh, we'll see what the Delta says. This crow is delicious because it appears we have an INR card. <laughs> Fia Bonnie, the Void Siren. She has Black Powder Pistol, which I think is the same as that previous squad. So she starts with three Black Powder Markers, whatever. After moving before attacking, you may remove a Powder Marker from this card to add four to her range for the rest of the turn. You may only use this special power once during a round, so three times the game once per round. She can go from a range of one to a range of five. There are much better ranged unit options, but let's keep reading the card. Master of Disguise 13, the first time each turn that Fia Bonnie is targeted by a squad figure with a normal or special attack, you may roll a 20-sided die. If you roll 13 or higher, Fia Bonnie cannot be targeted that a turn or any other attack this turn. Very cool. Lots of survivability there. Very much counters the squad base play. I've been saying that. I sound like a broken record, but it's true. I like it. I like it a lot. Disengage. We already talked about that. She doesn't have to take an attack of opportunity. Let's look at her stats. Movement of five, range of one, attack of four, defense of three. She's Einar, so she is the one for me. I'm definitely going to be running with her. She's also a captain, so runs with that whole pirate theme. Big fan of Fia Bonnie. Killian Vane the third, fighting for Revna, a unique pirate hero. We haven't seen any of that this release. Blunderbuss special attack, range of four, attack of three. All figures adjacent to the figure targeted by Blunderbuss special attack are also affected by Blunderbuss special attack. Roll attack dice once for all affected figure. Each figure rolls defense dice separately. Killian Vane the third cannot be affected by his own Blunderbuss special attack. Love an AoE. We love AoEs in this household. Let's move on to his stats, because that's his only special ability. Movement of five, range of one, attack of four, defense of two, five hit points. I think he is a very, 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 very solid figure. Cannot complain. Yeah, I'll probably use him. I like him. I'm a fan. Not much. You know, once again, just smash mouth basketball. Nothing flashy. Gets the job done. Gets his layups. Uh, Onshu, the Valken Eye. Sonic Blast Special Attack, range of four, attack of two. You may attack one additional time with Sonic Blast Special Attack and flying. Simple, to the point, gets the job done, mows down squads. Big fan. Anyone who is, I think there was a lot of concern that Age of Annihilation would be too OP or Classic would be too OP. I think it's a nice balance because it's very hero centric. We haven't seen that many squads and the heroes are very good against squads and squads are naturally more powerful than heroes. So I think it honestly brings a balance to the game. Stats, three hit points, which is not a lot. Movement of six, range of one, attack of three, defense of three for only 50 points. I think that is very fair. We'll see what the Delta says. Key to the Spring Runner, more equipped representation starts off with apparition figures must be within two spaces of key to the spring runner to target her with a normal or special attack very cool similar to the crop and got agents nice little bit of defense there phantom walk kita can move through all figures and is never attacked when leaving an engagement incredibly useful as my girlfriend found out at the last tournament we played in akita's base stats are movement of six range of one attack of two and defense of four for 30 points i would bump that up to maybe 50 points or 60 points, but you know what? She seems solid, like a solid filler pick, especially at that price. Oh, she only has two hit points, so pretty weak. You know what? I take back what I say about adjusting the point value. I think she is a very solid filler pick. And then finally, we have Awashia, Master of Tides, who has command, once again, Aquila represent. Command familiar after revealing an order marker on Awashia, Master of Tides. Before taking Awashia's turn, you may take a turn with a small or medium beast you control. Wow, I wonder if she's meant to pair with Key to the Spring Runner. Twister, special attack, range of six, attack. Attack of four, Iwashia may use Twister special attack if she's within one space of a water tail. Choose a figure to attack. You may also choose up to two spaces in a straight line from the targeted figure. All figures on those spaces are also affected by Twister special attack. Roll attack dice once for all affected figures. Each figure rolls defense dice separately. Iwashia is not affected by Twister special attack. Once again, we love an AoE in this house. Once again, it counters squads. 
there's nothing more new to say. Uh, yeah, I, I like it. It's a solid, she seems like a solid caster, which she's a wizard. There's not a lot of those in Heroescape. There's like the elf wizards, but it's kind of limited to that. So I like expanding that archetype. Aegis of the River, Awashia does not have to stop her movement when entering a water space. Add one to uh, Awashia's defense value when she is on a water space. We've seen that before. She's meant to play in water. She's going to be screwed in maps that don't have water. Nothing new, but I really like her special attack so far. I like the bonding with beasts. I think there are a number of beasts in classic. My knowledge is not that encyclopedia, encyclopedia, whatever, with the classic figures, but I'm pretty sure she'd be pretty solid. Create water. Okay. <laughs> Iwashia starts each game with three water tiles on this army card. At the end of Iwashia's turn, you may place a water tile from this army card on Iwashia's space or within one space of Iwashia if the water tile fits normally on that space. That is so fucking cool. I can't believe it took 20 years for designers to come up with that. The terrain is modular. Why are we not using that in the gameplay? That makes so much sense reading that card. What great design. Whoever designed this. Kudos to you. And it, you know, helps because she's water-based. So, oh, there's no water on the map. She can create her own. I mean, not a lot, but still, I, I like that. That's a big, I'm a big fan. Her base stats, movement of five, range of one, attack of three, defense of four with four life points, 115 points. I think that is very fair, very appropriate. Now, I also got Sergeant Drake. So Drake comes with Thorian speed. Opponent's figures must be adjacent to Sergeant Drake Alexander to attack him with a normal attack. Nothing new. That is every Drake ever has had that. Grapple grab eight. After moving, and before attacking with Drake, you may choose one enemy, small or medium figure within four clear sight spaces whose level is no more than six levels above or below Drake's level. Roll the 20 sided die. If you roll an eight or higher, place the chosen figure on any empty same level space adjacent to Drake. If the chosen figure is engaged when it's moved by grapple grab, it will not take any leaving engagement attacks. I think that is so cool. I'm surprised it took this long. Well, no new stuff has been made in like 14 years, but you get what I'm saying. I love the idea of a grapple and just yoinking. I played a lot of Roadhog when I played Overwatch, so I'm a big fan. He is the Roadhog of Heroescape, especially because he has six hit points, so he's beefy. Movement of five, range of one, attack of six, so he hits like a freaking freight train, and defense of three, so he is a little squishy. I like it. They're doing Drake justice. They just need to paint his face. That's my blind react to every single one of the Wave 1 Age of Annihilation, Heroescape, figures, releases, units, whatever. My brain's a little tired from reading that. I'm ready to play. So we're going to go do that. If you are a Dungeon World fan or whatever, you have no idea what I'm talking about, click right here. I made a kind of guide on how to play Heroescape. You should check it out. I'm going to play with my new toys. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm not going to do the thing because I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to go play now. Goodbye.